Well, hello and welcome to Lord of the Board. My name is Sam Smith, and today we are going to be doing another game of Root Digital. And this was a game that I was very, very excited to do. Um, it was super fun, and I'm really glad that I got it on film. So I really hope that you guys actually enjoy this video. Um, have a good time. There's a lot of twists and turns. Um, if you guys do like this content, if you guys want more gameplays, um, this, is, this takes a lot of work to edit, to go through the whole thing, to make sure that there's no really pause mon moments. So um, I really appreciate it if you guys just dropped a like, uh, as well as dropped a comment below just saying that this is kind of the, some of the kind of content that you guys would like to see more of if you do enjoy it. So please stay tuned and uh, enjoy the show. Alrighty, so jumping right into the game, we have got a game between the Lizards, the Marquise de Cat, the Vagabond, as well as me playing as the Eerie. Now, in this game, um, one of the things that I wanted to try and do was to pull off a double build despot, and um, I end up choosing uh, the despot as my first uh, Eerie leader for that very reason. Now, I do remember um, I started with a couple of extra rabbit cards, so I am thinking about how exactly I'm going to be phrasing this early game, what I'm going to be putting into that decree. It looks like I'm, I'm taking a little bit to decide. I do remember that I was thinking, I, I actually didn't know exactly if I was going to be able to pull off the double build uh, the spot, but uh, it ended up being the way that I'm going to go. So then we've got the Vagabond who chooses the Vagrant, which is my favorite Vagabond. Uh, really excited to see that pick. Uh, it's my favorite one to play the game with, so it's very fun. Looks like we've got the Lizard Cult up in the top right corner. I'm in the bottom right corner. And the cats are in the top left corner on the fox. So, Marquise de Cat's making their first turn. Let's see what they decided to do. <laughs> Looks like I got as So somebody, somebody, there's always one person that asks uh, if I'm the Lord of the Board from YouTube. Uh, and I'm not afraid to say that I am. So I went ahead and just told him. No problem there. Now the Marquise looks like they're going to start with uh, an overwork build probably build two so let's see here i remember so i actually played this game uh quite a bit ago and um just kind of jumping back and watching i just remember it was such a nuts game and i was really excited to show everyone uh so i don't actually remember all of the things that happen in this game but i am excited to kind of experience some of these uh, with you guys, but I do remember some moments, so it's, I'm not going in completely blind here. So it looks like uh, the cats did the standard uh, build, overwork build, spent a card, and was able to recruit as well. So great opener for the cats. They got a recruit as well as a second sawmill. So they're starting off very strong. We've got the vagrant going over to the right, getting that first ruin. And moving back to the center of the map, it looks like. Okay. Cool deal. Now what? Okay, so it looks like they're going to be aiding. So I think at this point I was thinking that the Vagrant was probably going to go uh, a more aiding strategy anyways, because I feel like that's kind of where the meta is going right now, at least with uh, current digital games that I've been playing, as a lot of players going for that. So, okay, we get to my first turn, and um, there's, a, there's a couple things. So you can't, you don't really want to make the double build despot um, 
work without a bird in build. Uh, two birds in build is what you need. So I was kind of a little bit disappointed that I didn't have that bird at the beginning of the game, but uh, I still had a good hand and I was hoping that I might be able to get a bird next turn. So I'm going kind of heavier on the rabbit cards, putting one in recruit, putting one in move, and just trying to set up myself. Now, I do a split here. So Basically, a split is when you're sending all of your troops over to one location and then moving them all from that location to another location. So I'm going over to the mouse clearing and then I'm going to be sending them all over to that fox clearing. I'm taking the more protected position in here because this is a really good spot to lay down an eerie roost because it's going to be kind of tucked away for most and the majority of the game. Players would have to spend a lot of resources in order to get back there in that corner. So it's a, it's a pretty good spot to put one. Um, it, it doesn't give you any land in the middle of the map, but it is going to be pretty protected for the majority of the game. So now the Lizard Cult is playing their first turn. They are going to be doing their mischievous things, their little rituals. Uh, I do remember that in this game, the Lizard Cult, it took them uh, quite a few turns to get their engine rolling. And so they didn't start scoring points uh, until a little bit of a while later. So you're going to see the first couple of turns for the Lizard Cult being a little bit slower, but they do jump up in a bit here. Now, let's see what the cats are going to do now. It looks like they're going to be kind of consolidating some of their troops. They're going to leave that bottom left clearing completely empty, and they're just going to be kind of shuffling units around and moving forward with a build, I assume. And it looks like they are going to be dropping a recruiter up kind of in the center of the map. Now, this is a good hold. This line right here of recruiters is exactly what you want as the Marquise de Cat to kind of create that line, that, that wall of rule, and then doing the recruit action, having three at each recruiter. This is a great first two turns for the Marquise de Cat in this game. Now, the Vagabond is making their second turn. Let's see what they're going to do. They have a lot of options. They could just keep exploring, which it looks like they're going to be doing that right now. And going to be crafting the root tea. This is <laughs> this is also an extremely good opener for the vagrant. Root tea is kind of that the item that you really really need. This and a bag. You're you're going to need one of these. The nice thing about the bag is that you're going to be able to find one of those inside of your ruins. But you cannot get a root tea inside of the ruins. So being able to craft that root tea is an absolute excellent move for the vagrant. They're starting off very strong as well with both Marquise at four points, vagrant at five. Uh, me only at one, but it looks like I did get that bird card, so I am going to be pursuing the Despot double build. Now, the Despot double build actually works because having the two wild birds, you can leave basically roosts completely undefended if you want to in order to keep spreading. And so your opponents will go for those weaker ones, but then you can use those spots to essentially refill as needed. So I'm actually leaving that roost in that fox clearing completely undefended because at this rate, I'm just gonna go forth and attempt to just get as many roosts down as possible before I eventually turmoil here. Now, obviously I'm keeping a bit more protected in both of my rabbit clearings. That's because I've got that rabbit recruit. You don't want to be pushed into turmoil with this build. You want to make sure that you're going into turmoil when you need to. Now, it looks like the Lizard Colt actually had some acolytes, so they were able to pop off a convert over in that rabbit clearing. And they were also able to lay down a... Uh, garden up in the top corner so now they're starting to get their engine rolling a little bit with that extra card draw this is this is what you need to be doing as the lizard cult doing a lot of sacrifices so that it seems like they have a lot of bird cards uh, interesting. They're probably going to want to try and get rid of those bird cards pretty quickly because what you want to do is you, you ideally want to have suited cards in your hand as the lizard cult to get basically two gardens of each suit that's like the goal Now, cats have two sawmills. They've got three recruits, one crafting station. It looks like they're crafting the boot for one point here. I'm taking a moment to calculate my points. <laughs> I do actually do that a lot. It's a, 
bad habit. I always look at my board. I guess it's not a bad habit, but I, I just do it a lot. So it looks like the cats are going to fall into the trap that I set, which was leaving my roost completely undefended. Now, the reason why this is great is because I can just relay a roost right there now that it's an empty spot. So this just makes my game even easier. Even though it seems like you're doing, you're, you're hurting me, you're actually helping me not go into turmoil and have more options to place that roost. Now they did go ahead and leave down another sawmill. So they are in a good position. They've got four, four, four in the center of the map protecting sawmills, recruiters. I mean, it's, it's looking really strong for the cats at eight points and it's only been their third turn in the game. Now the Vagrant has a couple of options here and I think they're thinking about what exactly direction they want to start taking this game for themselves. Are they gonna be going for the heavy aid? Are they gonna be doing questing? Are they gonna be doing a mixture? Are they going to try to find swords and attempt to do more of a battle version? It looks like they're going for more ruins instead of leaving them. Now, just to note really quickly, one of the strategies that you can do as the Vagabond, depending on what items you're actually getting in your pack or your bag, um, you can actually leave some of those ruins down on the map in order to slow down bigger factions like, say, the Cats and the Eerie. Them not being able to, oh, even, even the Lizard Cult, this would be a perfect game to do that because that actually slows them down not having build spots. Opening up that build spot for the Cats just gives them another place to place and they already have eight points. So I'm trying to set up my own decree, figuring out what I am going to do. I am going to be placing a fox card in battle because I am going for a very particular clearing. I'm going to go ahead and do my recruits here. And I believe I'm going right back to that choke point there, but I'm, I'm sorry, right back to that, that hidden clearing. Uh, the one on the bottom with the two build spots. I don't want the cats to have that because they can actually benefit from two build spots. And I also don't want the lizard cult to have that. And it's a really good one for me because like I said, tucked in the bottom of the map. It takes a lot of resources to get there for my opponents. So I'm going there with two eerie warriors. I'm going to be doing my battle there. And I believe I place my roost there as well. But we'll go ahead and see here. Ooh, perfect. So that is a 2-0. That is the best roll I could have gotten. And I am also really glad that they did not have an ambush. That would have been a pretty nice time to use one. Would have put me right into turmoil. So, whew. So, like, this is the crazy thing about the double build despot is that I literally have one, two, three, four, five roosts. And this has been, I think, only my third turn of the game crazy opener really with this build uh so that i just jumped up all the way up to eight points and i'm doing really good i've also got all of the edge clearings if you look i've created a line for myself this is so that my opponents really have to kind of push towards me in order to get my roosts out and put themselves in a vulnerable position however i was kind of naturally forced into this anyways just due to the position of the marquise de cat at the moment but everything's bound to change in a little bit here lizard colt coming in and doing a ritual play placing down that garden in the fox clearing looks like they're trying to set up another card draw engine which is exactly what they need right now in the game in order to start scoring those points and catching up with the rest of the pack here All right, doing some sacrifices, all of the usual lizard cult. A lot more sacrifices. They've got they've got quite a bit of wild cards, it seems like, in their hand. All right, are they going to be able to craft anything? Crafting with the lizard cult is one of the hardest things because... Uh, oftentimes you don't really control the outcast. So depending on whatever the outcast is, if you have the things to craft, it's nice, but it oftentimes does not add up with the cards. So it looks like that's going to be it for the Lizard Cult, and we are moving on to the Marquise the Cat. They're going to be considering a field hospital, and they are going to be using it.
Alrighty, so crafting that boot, it seems like they're going... They're going for uh, quite a bit more crafting. Now, usually, now these items are okay to craft because this is not stuff that the Vagrant really benefits that much from. Um, so doing really good here. Uh, oh, and also laying down a third, sorry, fourth sawmill right in the most centric clearing in the game, having connections to five other clearings. Craziness. Um, it looks like they're going to be moving and just buffing up their keep a little bit. I think they were a little afraid that they might get uh, attacked by maybe the Vagrant. And also moving up to protect that crafting workshop, uh, just to protect it. You know, just put one warrior there, that way nobody gets the point for free. Good moves here from the Marquise de Cat. Now the Vagrant, let's see what they're going to do on their day here. Hmm... So they're going to be considering their options here. Oh, they're going to be aiding again, it looks like. But who are they going to aid is the question. Ah, of course, the Marquise de Cat, uh, because they're going to be taking some of these items from them in order to fuel their own engine. And going to be doing another explore, opening up another build spot. For those cats, uh, this is not what you want to see. It's it's scary. Uh, I just don't like giving all these build spots for them, especially when they're already doing so well. Um, this basically lets them put zero effort to spread from this point in the game. They're going to be moving up over to my standalone roost here. And it looks like they're going to be crafting a crossbow as well, going up to nine points. And are they going to take out my roost? I remember that they do. Um, there it goes. Uh, okay, so me and the Vagrant, it seems like at this point in the game, are not very friendly with each other here. Alrighty, so it is going to be my turn, and I remember that I was just taking such a long time to decide, so the clock is already ticking. I just jumped and skipped all of my thinking. My mouse was just going crazy, and I was just thinking, what in the world am I going to do? I don't know why, but my brain just blanked, so um, I cut that out because there was really nothing there. I was just trying to figure out what I'm doing, and sometimes I work better under pressure anyways, and you're going to see that right here. So I am going to be fueling the bunny clearing and we are going to be surging forward. We are going to be moving past this fox clearing once again, leaving a roost completely undefended, like I said, is a good strategy to do. And we're going to be moving up to that kind of top middle area of the rabbit clearing here. And I'm just going to be moving one from this mouse clearing into that fox clearing. Only reason for that is just to complete the decree. And I'm also going to do my combat there because I honestly didn't really care. Now, this is the turn that I am going to be going into turmoil. I wanted to let it go. I wanted to not go into turmoil this turn. I wanted to go into turmoil the next turn. However, it's not the worst time that I could go into turmoil. It's not too bad. Um, I'm going to be losing five points, and I think I'm going to be gaining four. <sighs> so it's it's a rough time to be it's a rough time to be the eerie. Um, not not the best time, but I've got you know quite a few roosts out still. I'm going to be transferring over to the commander because I realize that it is about my time to kind of rise up here and push against my opponents. Lizard Colts got the hated outcast of the fox. Let's see if they're going to do any of their evil sanctification. And they are. They're going to be striking back at the Marquise de Cat in the fox clearing. And converting as well. So they've got two lizards there and a garden. So that actually puts them at three uh, fox gardens. So they only need one more and they're going to get that three point scoring buff. Now they're doing their rituals uh, and they are going to score for Fox there. So they're they're kind of moving up a little bit more briskly now, as you can see. And some more sacrifices being done by them. Uh, they have not managed to transfer over those bird cards. I think they could have swapped them in for some of the dominance cards. I believe that there's already been a couple of dominance cards Um put into that discord pile so just keep in mind lizard players that if you have a wild card 
best thing sometimes to do with that is just to trade it in for a dominance card so that you have another suit. That is going to be much more beneficial for your gameplay as the Lizard Cult. And coming in, we've got the Cats making another turn. They've got a really good setup right now. I am... I'm honestly mostly scared of them right now at the at the at the moment um, because they are at 14 points, have a great position. They don't really have a weak spot in their infrastructure, uh, and yeah, they're just doing really really well, playing a very solid game. They're gonna send a cat down just to take out my roost. It looks like at that point. Um, now this is a great move because since I did just go into turmoil. I'm not doing the double build despot anymore, so this is a perfect time to take out my roosts. Uh, now, extending down there, taking out that roost, that's good. Um, they could have pushed a little bit harder, it looks like. I'm wondering if they might not have had the actions to do so, but if they had pushed in and taken out a couple more, it would have put me in an even worse position, which would have been better. Me having four roosts is pretty great as the commander, uh, but my action economy is just extremely low. So it's about like the middle of the game right now and <laughs> the the cats are at 15 points and I am at only seven. Uh, I share uh, a score scoring uh, track with the lizard cult also at seven and the vagrant at 10. And the cats ending their turn with 17 points. Ooh, okay. This is not looking so good for me. And we're going to be moving over to the Vagrant's turn. Now, I'm not sure if it's this turn or not, but I believe the Vagrant does something very interesting in this in this turn, but we'll, we'll go ahead and see. So they're gonna be moving up. I think they're just trying to get into some sort of a position. They're coming over to my new kind of roost, and there it is. Uh, they, <laughs> woo, okay, this game is just, it has a lot of twists and turns in it. What did I tell you? So the Vagrant is actually going to start a coalition with me, and trust me, I did not expect this at all. Uh, they could have moved from this point and possibly still won the game alone, but instead they opted for a coalition with me and at this point i'm thinking oh man we're both going down buddy i mean we're i <laughs> i don't think i'm gonna be able to pull this one out of the hat so it's just a crazy game really so uh they are giving me some great great rabbit cards and it's possible that maybe they were thinking that a coalition would be perfect because you're the only one that can actually craft this favor of the mice as well as check out this nice bunny ambush so i think they're trying to essentially have me kind of go for more of this um, aggressive uh, bunny favor play but they're also going to be moving down. They're going to be causing some some crazy fighting between the other two factions. That's why the Vagrant Coalition actually is great because you can use uh, that special ability uh, to essentially cause destruction between the other two factions in the game. So it's a really, really good combo. Now it is my turn and I need to capitalize on this newfound relationship that I've gotten with the Vagrant, so I am going to be putting a, another card into my battle. I believe I'm going to be putting another card into my recruit. And that is going to be a good little setup. We're going to be doing two battles, one recruit, one move. And I think you already know where I'm headed. Um, the spot had just opened up because of the Vagrant, so we're kind of working together already to hit back at both of these other factions, hopefully to pull off a coalition win here. So I'm going to be moving down to the Fox Clearing and going to be performing my first battle towards the Cats. Ooh, and it looks like the cats have an ambush card, or at least they're definitely, yep, there it is. So that is two gone for me. Ugh, not the best, not the best. So I am now down to two. If the lizard cult 
have an ambush card, this would literally be the worst thing that could happen. <laughs> uh, that would be really rough. The bright side is, is that I don't have anything in build, so I'm not going to be going into turmoil just because I can't place a roost. And it's a really, really good thing that I did not take that risk because with this battle here, I'm only going to be able to take care of that lizard and not be able to place a roost because those gardens make sure that they actually control that clearing. So moving on swiftly, gaining three points, ending this turn with 11 due to taking some of the points, uh, getting that point from the Marquise de Cat building. And the Lizard Cult, it looks like they are trying to figure out what they're going to be doing for a conspiracy here. And they were trying to think very hard about what they were going to do. This turn took them quite a while and uh, they ended up running out of time, it looks like here. So they're just rapid fire placing and, and using actions. Uh, they went ahead and did a convert on, um, it looks like one of my eerie warriors there, which was uh, rude. <laughs> And they're going to be converting my other one. So uh, I've lost two warriors. It's great. They're going to be scoring for mouse. That's going to give them two points. And honestly, they could be placing another fox and scoring three. There it goes. So they're at 12 points, really jumping up here, coming out from behind. Uh, the lizard colts coming up real fast here. And now the cat's at 17 points. Let's see what they're going to go ahead and do here. Um, they are once again still in a great position in this game, having those uh, five cat warriors basically defending a very strong clearing. So they're going to be crafting a bag. They've actually been crafting a lot. And this is definitely something that you want to do as the Marquise de Cat whenever you can. If you can get, oh my gosh, okay, crafting extremely well, putting themselves up four more points just by crafting alone, getting that bag and those coins. They're just surging upwards, ending uh, at 21 here and still going to be able to pull off to place a building. It looks like it. So placing that recruiter down on the bottom Ah, oh, man, they're doing very, very well right now. It looks like they're going to be ending their turn here at 23 points. It looks like they're going to be moving a little bit to basically further protect their keep as well. And that is it for this turn for them. Now, me and the Vagrant really need to work together. That's kind of what I'm thinking is that, uh, you know, we're not going to we're not going to make it out of this unless we work together to uh, punish both of these other factions right now. I'm getting definitely very scared. Uh, this is not a good game. I uh, the cats are just in such a good position at the moment, but it looks like the Vagrant is going to be taking an attack towards the Lizard Cult. The Lizard Cult is going to be ambushing back. Oof, not good, not what you want to see. All right, so it looks like a 1-1 one, one here. Now, this is really nice because at this point, they've taken down that Lizard Cult Warrior but those two gardens are still now undefended and the Vagrant playing very well here as Coalition Vagrant, not taking those two gardens, leaving them for me to score as they cannot actually score any more points with the Coalition that they chose. So um, that that is just a great play. It looks like I'll be able to go ahead and take those, getting two more points for myself here. And they're going to be causing some more mischief, doing their special uh, torch ability again to cause the Lizard Colt and the cats to fight each other. This is some really, really great coalition gameplay from the Vagrant player here. And at the end there, they're going to be aiding and giving me a bird card, which is always welcome as the Eerie. I will go ahead and take that. That is awesome. All 
Alrighty, so it is my turn and I need to figure out the most optimal play here. I see that those two gardens are completely undefended. Great opportunity for me to uh, get some extra points right now and I am going to be putting that bird into the build. Um, and I think I'm thinking of how can I get some more troops as well. Uh, my bunnies are usually the more defended of my roosts right now still, so I went ahead and put the bunny recruit in there. Now, I, <laughs> I think uh, later in the game I realized that I should have just crafted that tax collector, but... You know, when you're in the, when you're in the heat of the game, you never really realize everything. But honestly, I should have just crafted it because I was going to be discarding it at the end of this turn, anyways. So, moving down here now, I'm probably thinking of the risk here. Now they just recently used uh, an ambush card, so I think I, I I am thinking that I am completely safe from an ambush. So I'm going to go forth and attack these roosts. Now, even if I just got a zero right now, I would take them both because of my commander's ability. So that's why I was completely okay with just putting the one Eerie down there. Because I'm going to be getting one for the defenseless, one for my commander. That's two. So I would have automatically gotten those two roosts. So as long as they didn't have an ambush, I was guaranteed to get that. <clears throat> now, my second battle... Uh, I was considering whether I wanted to take this workshop or not. I ended up deciding to take the workshop because I didn't think that they were going to try and place a building in that clearing. And I wanted the extra point because I realized that I'm really falling behind here. And placing that roost down in the fox clearing, the most Literally the most interconnected fox clearing ever. This is, <laughs> it's just such a sketchy place, but I'm ending my turn with 18 points here. And this is a pretty good position and I have to discard a card. And honestly, I should have just crafted it, but I'm just gonna discard it now. So whatever. <laughs> Now the Lizard Colt just took a pretty big hit. Um, now their Fox though is going to be hated. So they definitely have uh, quite a few options on what they can do and they could definitely screw me over. They're going to be making an attack towards the cats. I think everybody kind of realizes that the cats are definitely going to win if we don't do anything, even with our coalition over here. Um, and great roll from the Lizard Colt taking down three of their uh, cat warriors and only losing one in the process. Amazing roll there. Uh, they're still considering doing a conspiracy, and it looks like they are going to be doing one, but I'm not really sure I remember which one. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so there goes my roost that I had just placed there. They're going to be placing a garden there. Trying to probably put a nice foothold back down for their... Oh, they're also going to be converting there. Okay, so yeah, they just literally took that clearing away from me super fast. And they're going to be scoring off of Fox, putting them at 15 and doing a couple more sacrifices. And it looks like that's all they were able to pull off that turn. Okay, so jumping over to the cats. Let's see if they're going to be crafting anything this turn. They've, they've crafted so many items already this this game. Uh, if they were able to craft more, I would just be very surprised and honestly just terrified of the option and opportunity of it. So I think the cats are going to be doing something a little bit different. Not really sure what they're going to be doing though. All right, so they're going to be moving figuring out changing up their position they're sending two cat warriors over to the fox clearing here
And I think this move I remember in the chat there, they were saying, oh no, I made a mistake. I didn't want to move two over there. Can't redo, can't undo. Cause you can't undo after you start a battle, but um, they immediately regretted what they did because only sending two over there, if the, if the lizard cult has an ambush, um, this would put them in a very, very bad position. And the combat's happening here and um, yeah. So the lizard cult did indeed have an ambush it should be coming up uh there it is oof so that is very very painful um oh man however if they had moved that cat out with them even if they had done that putting their buildings at that sketchy of a location would have been very dangerous um so it, it's really just dependent on whether they were able to actually make that work or not but here now ending right now at 25 points which is insane this is such a crazy game just absolutely wild um the vagrant is now aiding me with another bird card doing a great job collecting those bird cards and just handing them over to me um as as their coalition partner Looks like they went ahead and repaired their crossbow to use that crossbow to remove that lizard cult to leave that garden undefended and end their turn, bringing it to my turn. Now, I am at 18 points right now. 18 points. So if I wanted to win the game this turn, I needed to math out getting 12 points. And um, there was a long period of thinking here where I literally mathed out 12 points um, but I did do it fast enough to make sure that that time was not ticking so I basically had to puzzle my way through this to try and figure out could I win this turn and it turns out that I I could but it was going to depend on me not getting an ambush so a little bit sketchy um, <laughs> but uh, yeah so I ended up uh, putting in my decree now there is one card that if I was not able to craft, I would not have been able to make this work, uh, even if I didn't get ambushed. And that was the birdie bindle card that I am going to be crafting in a second here. I'm still a little sketched out though. I'm still thinking like, oh my gosh, is this real? Can I make these 12 points work? Can I actually do this? Uh, and a very hesitant to click the, the daylight button because I'm just, I'm, I'm freaking out, you know, is, is this wise? Um, but honestly, this is the only time that I can really jump for it right now. This is the opportunity here with everything. So we are now moving on to the 12 point turn attempt here. We're going to be crafting that bag for the first point. That's going to put me at 19. And now on to the decree. We're going to be recruiting two in our rabbit clearing. We're going to be moving those units over uh, looks like we're only going to be bringing one. Once again, this this play is taking risks. I'm moving one over to those uh, those gardens. I did see that they just played that that ambush over on them, so I'm I'm hoping that they don't have another one and that I'm protected. I'm going to be making that combat now. And I am good. So that is going to be two more points. So I have now scored three. That's going to put me at 21 points. And now I've got two battles that I can do in this clearing towards the Marquis de Cat. This is going to be the real point. Um, the real the real point gain here, uh, as long as I can get some pretty good rolls. But really, with the commander, I'm already doing so well. Boom, the 3-0. Literally the best roll that I could possibly have gotten. That's four four hits towards the Marquise de Cat in the first, so that's already three tokens I'm taking from them. Three more points for me, and that's going to put me at 24. Absolutely insane. It looks like the cat's calling GG here, and I still have another combat. I'm going to go ahead and put GG here, because they, if they don't have an ambush right now, uh, even if they did, I would be able to take both of these buildings, so this is game. Uh, and I'm going to be attacking those two buildings here to get two more points, putting me at 26. And I ended up telling that if I literally didn't have that bag in my hand, <laughs> I would not 
win right now. Like, the, what a crazy game. Absolutely so close with this, this crazy coalition victory. There were so many points at which I was thinking, oh my gosh, the cats literally cannot be stopped. They are definitely going to win. But it was that move with the two cats that, that got ambushed that really saved my game, and I was able to somehow puzzle out together this crazy 12-point win as the Eerie. <laughs> Being able to place that roost and gaining exactly four victory points right at the end of the game, putting me at 30. It is a coalition victory for the Vagrant and the Yuri. What a good game, everyone. Thank you so much. If you did enjoy this game and would like to see more content like this, please go ahead and like as well as subscribe to the channel. Both of those help me in order to get uh, more views as well as to get this video to more people. But thank you so much, guys. With that, let us go ahead and drop the beat.